All right, welcome to Making a Visual Novel in UE4, part three. In the previous parts, we created a scene as a um, first as a spreadsheet, and then we brought it into Unreal as a data table. Then we started to make a few different blueprints that would interpret that data table, starting with an NPC character that you could click on, and then that would create a scene template which is going to uh, interpret the data table and play it out as a scene. So in this final part, we're going to put all those pieces together, uh, make them continue to talk to each other, and then display the scene on the screen through a widget. So now we have a scene template that's got an array of rows from our data table of the scene. And that's all fed in, so now we just actually actually have to launch uh, the scene. So I'm going to add another custom event here. Play the line. Sorry, that's incredibly tiny. When this uh, is completed over here, it's going to fire play line. That means our scene has been created and now we're ready to start playing the lines. All right. So we've got our array of rows all built out. Now we want to pull the first one. We're going to say git. And we're going to need a variable to keep track of what row we're on. So we're going to make a new variable called row, make that an integer over here, turn it back into a single variable there. I'm going to compile. Um, its default is going to be zero, and that's good. That's what we want. Uh, so I have to make a quick note about this because it gets a little uh, confusing, um, definitely still to me. The row handle um, variable that we're going to hold in the scene template actually is not, it's going to relate to the, to the row name here, but it doesn't need to equal it. The row names here are just basically for Unreal um, to track each row. It's basically the identifier for Unreal. Uh, the row variable that we're using in the scene template is a slightly different variable that we're tracking um, to go through the array. So it may seem like that would always match, but what if you added a new row and you called it um, to be, or what if it was out of order, um, which is just something you can do. And obviously that makes things messy. Um, but we want to keep a flexible system that will uh, allow for you to do that if for some reason you needed to. Because trust me, when you're making a big scene and you need to make a little change in Unreal, you might have to do something like that. So just so you know, the row number correlates to this number, but it is does not need to be exactly the same. So it's going to always start at zero. To, to pull the first element out of the array, and it's going to go up with each line. So at the very beginning, we're going to get the very first index from our array of rows, and we're going to pull that out. And we can use something called break if we want to look at each of the variables within that row, which is pretty awesome. So now that we've got all these different bl blueprints that are speaking to each other and building out our scene, we actually need a way to display it. So that is going to be the next step here. And trust me, all of these little steps are going to pay off eventually. All right, we need to create, we go to user interface and widget blueprint. And I'm gonna call this um, display dialogue. So in case you're not familiar with widgets, uh, they are wonderful things that you can use in Unreal um, that are really useful when you want to display something in 2D, uh, usually like your HUD or your menus. 
um, something that's always going to be 2D. And you don't have to worry about where it is in 3D space or anything like that. It's always going to show relative to the screen um, how you build it here in the widget. So I'm going to, I've got a basic text box I'm going to bring into the project. Once again, you should try to organize things a little bit better than I am for this tutorial as I am just dropping things right in. All right, we don't even need to make that a um, sprite to use it in the widget. Here in our widget for display dialog, we're gonna go to image. We're gonna add that to our canvas panel. Um, it shows up by default just as a little random white box here in the corner. You can give it an anchor. I'm gonna anchor it here at the bottom middle um, and the anchors uh, will help keep all the uh, X and Y coordinates you give it relative to a certain spot on the screen. Um, so that becomes really important if your resolution might change um, or the screen size changes or anything like that. And make sure that the uh, elements on the widget appear relative to that anchor point. So I'm going to get a, my image here for the text box going to find that here in appearance under image. I've got my image selected here. I'm going to drop that in with the arrow. I'm going to go ahead and just size that to content there and that that goes ahead go, goes ahead and makes it the same size as my PNG file. I'm going to drag these around just to get it about where I want. So now we've got um, the image of our text box. We'll want to have some text show up here. So I'm going to create um, first a text for the speaker name. Bring that down. Whoops, I don't want to change the size. I'm going to give that the same anchor here. So we want all of these elements to move together. So let's just put it about there. You could give it a little shadow here if you want. You bring up the alpha. Fiddle with the offset. Give it a little bit of a shadow. And over here, um, speaker name, I'm going to make this a variable so that we can change it as we go. All right, so our speaker name is going to appear there. Next, we need another text box for the actual text. So I'm going to move that down. Give it the same anchor as our others here. Just kind of eyeballing this right now. All right. We also need this to be a variable. We'll call it speaking text. Click is variable. Um, so when you do that, then, then when you go into your blueprint graph over here, you can reference those as variables. So that you have a few different options of how to handle this. Um, you can completely handle the text in your blueprint uh, over here if you want um, by pulling these out. Another thing you can do is when you go to your widget elements, you can, let's see, you can find the text and you can bind it to something, um, a function. So I'm going to create a binding. I'm going to promote this to another variable. Uh, 
In this case, I'm, I'm kind of making all these variables just so you can see different ways uh, of doing this. You wouldn't necessarily have to make this many variables. Um, so you can either uh, bind a variable this way and then that gives you the option of also adding extra conditions here or you could have done it in your main event graph by pulling out this widget variable and doing something like set text and then feeding something into that. So just so you know those are a couple different ways you can handle it. Right now, for the sake of simplicity, I am just binding it to this function here that's going to read the text variable. All right. We've, we've got a way to uh, theoretically display the text now. So we're going to go in. I like to keep a lot of tabs open. That's That might drive some people crazy. Uh, but yes, this is just how I tend to work, so bear with me. All right, we're back on the scene template. So our scene template has uh, received all of the info about the scene. It's ready to parse it out. It's got that first row. It's got the text variable here. And we want to display it. So another thing I'm going to add here to our initiate scene. Um, is we want to we have to create that widget if we want it to show up anywhere. So I'm going to say create widget. Going to get our display dialog over here. Drop that in. I'm going to go ahead and save everything so far. All right, and I'm going to set this to a local variable promote to variable call it display dialog widget and once again this is kind of a matter of uh, uh, from my experience um, when you're creating these el really important elements of a scene it's really helpful to save them as variables so that you can keep uh, referencing them as you go uh, without having to search your entire uh, game in real time to find each element. All right, so now that we have that set, when our line plays, we can get that. Um, another good habit is always checking something is valid before doing something with it. In this case, we know it's going to, but I'm just putting this here as a good uh, um, method of, of doing things. So if it's valid, we want to set the text variable. Again, we could do that two different ways. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use this variable we created. And we're going to make it equal to the string that we pulled out of our array. So that's going to get set when this line plays. We're also going to want to set the speaker name. So we need to give that. Uh, how about I, I show you the other way of doing it for this variable, just so you see each way. Uh, as you remember, we clicked it over here as a variable, the speaker name. So when we go back into our scene template, we can set speaker name. Oh, actually, you have to do this one a little differently. You have to get speaker name text. So that's basically getting the element from the widget that holds that information. And then you say set text. Let's see, is this going to interpret it for me? No. Enum to string. Here we go. We're pulling out our speaker enum 
we're going to change that to a string. I'm going through a lot of conversions here, but sometimes that's what you got to do. It's going to convert the enum to a string to text, and it's going to set that text in the widget. All right, so that concludes part three, and we are really close to uh, actually having a scene that's going to play and show the two lines that we wrote. So in part four, uh, we'll wrap up by actually uh, testing out what we've made so far, see how, how it plays, and then um, if it works, we get it to play both lines and then close the scene and destroy all the actors it created. So join me next for part four.